Welcome back to Wakeboarding Unleashed. This is level three Springfield. And Springfield has gone through some very hard times recently. It's absolutely flooded, like water a full story high, you know, 10, probably 10 feet, 12 feet, can you say? I mean, from, from the footage you saw. Yeah, it, it looked, uh, as you can see in the picture right there, yeah, it's, it's flooded, flooded. Is that lightning in the background? Yeah. Does that come down during the level? I didn't see any. Uh, it, it doesn't interfere in the path, but maybe in the background. But anyway, that gave me an idea for a movie. So you guys, guys, just roll with it. All right. The year is 2060. All of the ice caps have melted, and the ocean has ri risen thousands of feet. All right. You know, all, all of the land that's left, at least in the United States, is one island where Springfield is this summer, the Isle of Springfield. That's it? That's your idea? It's like a reverse water world, you know? Like overcoming disaster or, or finding new things or tipping cows for the fun of it. That's, that was your idea. See, here's what my idea was. My idea was inspired uh, almost directly from this. By the way, hang on, hang on. Before you go, I'm gonna let you go, but fuck this cow. I have no idea how to get to this cow. All the other cows have convenient places to get up to them. Like, oh, you grind this rail and then you go up to the next rail. I have no idea how to get that cow. And I'm glad, you're gonna see if we don't get back to it. I'm glad that when I finally got the cow, the way that was shown in the recording doesn't make sense at all and doesn't look like it should work. Because if I somehow recorded me elegantly getting that cow or something, you'd think it wasn't as bad of a deal as it is. But yeah, that's that's kind of the main annoying thing in this level. This level is actually pretty good, but you can go on. Okay, so I think they should make, like, a, a sports movie. Like, you, you know how they, they have extreme sports movies where it's like, there's a there's a, a kid who who wants to become a motocross whatever and there are people in his life who are like you can't do it and then he he, he has like a rival who also does motocross and is so much better than him and through adversity he manages to beat the rival right so something similar to that only with like you know he'd be like with aggressive in line or or maybe with skateboarding or something only the the setting of this movie would be like a, a city that was like a major city that was utterly destroyed like by an earthquake or something and and the city would like literally millions of people have died and the characters in the story just completely ignore it they they don't recognize the gravity of the situation and they're just like yeah let's do cool tricks and the whole movie just pretends like a million people dying so that you could get a really cool skate city was totally worth it. Basically everyone would be pulling moves like that the entire time. Like, you guys see during this LP, that's that's my, uh, that's my, uh, how, aren't I cool move. I'm just like, whatever. Uh, he's just like, whatever, you know? It's a casual glide. But I think, I think that idea could be better adapted to a video game. Like, what if Skate 4, uh, yeah, I, I don't remember what the name of the city is. It's like San Palermo or something like that. What if Skate 4 took place when the entire city is... San Moliterno. <laughs> That'll be the place in your uh, movie. But yeah. what if, like, Skate 4 took place after that city pretty much experienced, like, you know, complete dis destruction. You know, there's no one else around, or if there are, it's just, like, you know, lone survivors or such. And you're, you know, you're skating around in this ruined city doing tricking lines off of it or something. You know, it really brings something new to the series, yep. don't you think? There it is. That's how, that's how you're supposed to get the cow. I know it's kind of hard to see, but if you just grind into that wall and then you glitch around through the wall and grind on something else, you should get it. Yeah, no problem. No problem Absolutely no problem. Easy. It's like that's. I mean, if you look at the if you look in the guide, it's, it's like why why are you even looking at the guide? Oh, and this bit kind of reminded me of uh, aggressive inline, and you'll see why. Yeah. So, I don't know why his blades aren't getting chopped up when he hits things like this. Reminds me of all the fun we have in Saints Row 2. So much destruction, but I'm saying. You know, things like that would naturally happen in either Blank Tester's movie or my game. And 
y you know, it's just it's just seen as another opportunity to pull sick tricks and get fucking ripped. You know, that's my motto. Remember? Yeah, I remember that's your motto. I think it, I still maintain it would work better as a as a um, what's it called? Movie. As a, vi as a movie, yeah, because because you know they have all those tacky Disney Channel m movies where they do the exact same plot. Well, we're not all bad people. We're not all bad guys. We uh, caused a helicopter to take down like a like a radio or comms tower or something. They probably just cut An off emergency comms tower. They yeah. probably just cut off signal to the entirety of whatever's left of Springfield. But, but you know, on most days we're professional wakeboarders. But on our off days, we uh, we we work for I don't know like animal rescue or something, and we're uh, getting all these animals and delivering them to a higher ground to safety. I, I gotta say, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the fact that they decided not to just make the uh, lamb, lambs and cows literally just like static. Like, they actually have animations to them, which is kind of refreshing, I guess. Because animations do take up space uh, on the disc, and of course they, they also take time to create, and they actually took some time to, to do that, which, where other game developers might have just said, fuck it, this is totally unimportant why would we even bother which is I guess kind of nice I don't know later on uh, in a later level there's a mission to basically be like a taxi uh, and drive people around the level and they don't really have any animations at all I think they just have like waving at you and they wave at you when you show up and they wave at you when you drop them off and that's it so or, or maybe, maybe you know, the developers just loved animals more. And, you know, like, I'm cool with these animals. You know, they've all got names. Those lambs were, I think, what we come up with. Yeah. Like, uh, Gary uh, and... And Tommy. Todd, not Todd, not Todd, 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 Todd. He started out as Todd, then we saw it said drop her off, and we're like, well, shit. Um, these cows, we never named them. No, but we named one of them Greg. But the other one, uh, I don't think we named uh, well, this cow, I really wanted to use nitro and boost into that cow, but again, you can't use nitro, uh, in the water. Which is stupid. So much potential for hilarity just stripped away, you know? Imagine in my mind, I boost into that cow, you go, wow, you just boosted into that cow. Well, you're about to run over all these animals. <laughs> yeah, so... And the uh, front of your boat has, like, spikes on it. Yeah, so, uh, check this out. Um, the AI decides to just run straight over all of the animals we just saved. Yeah, you're just humping them. And the boat hops the fence. Yeah. And just keeps going. Here's the, uh, annoying challenge. It's actually, uh, kind of funny. Not this challenge, but, you know, whenever you complete a challenge or such, you know, the, uh game will start kind of going on its own you know there will be an ai that starts doing tricks behind the boat and sometimes the ai plays better than you ever could which it was that was kind of the case in sean palmer as well i mean there wasn't ai in it but if you stayed at the main menu for too long it would show like a pre-recorded run through of the game or a run through of a level and those like pre-recorded things showed me you know five or six things that I didn't know you could do and, you know, five or six gaps I didn't know existed. And in this game, sometimes the, uh, the AI afterwards just starts doing massive combos and grinding all over the place. And other times it just falls, falls on his face over and over again. Like you. Yes. But whereas I do it in with style. Class. Yeah, with style. How did you get that boost there? I just trusted in the boat. Um, when I was first, when I first played the game and tried to do this challenge, you know, I kept trying to jump at the end, and I could never get up to the wires. And I'm like, what the shit? And then one time, I just didn't do anything, and I got catapulted right up onto it. That's that's so strange. But so that's just that's just like the perfect example of, you know, trust in the boat. Ninety percent of the time, it'll pull you through. You know, it's more exceptions when you have to kind of manually do things yourself um, rather than being, like, the rule. 
I mean, there are points later on where you do have to do a lot of micromanaging. In the 5th uh, level Hong Kong, there's one challenge that... Well, I, di I didn't leave in all of the attempts I took, but basically Murphy's Law took hold and I screwed it up in a different way each time. Nice. That's very nice. Um, so, in Hong Kong, does, uh, does the city get flooded again? No, it's a harbor. Hong Kong. It's like... I forget the name of it. Kang. Uh, an easy rule of thumb, you can tell my mood when I was editing these videos by how many mistakes I left in. It's kind of an inverse relation. The more mistakes I left in, the, uh, the better I was feeling at the time. Or maybe like, you know, my post-playing glow or something. If I was super pissed at a level, I, I just cut all of them out. Boo. It's nice to see the inner workings of something like an OP, isn't it? Yeah, I <laughs> guess. I, I, I don't know what to say. Yeah, I guess. Look at that. Oh. I'm just driving through these things. You're getting those things. Hit some stuff. Yeah, man. So, if you can remember... I can't. <laughs> compare these boat race levels to Splashdown. Which one do you think had better levels? I mean, for racing. I think this this level has simpler tracks, I think, if I remember correctly, but the, the game as a whole, this game is less bland than Splashdown. So if we're just looking at that's a personal opinion, you know. The levels themselves are more bland in the boat levels. Now, I don't know about the wakeboarding, because obviously in, in Splashdown, we don't do a lot of grinding. I should hope. Well, in Splashdown, they added ramps all over the place. You know, maybe they should have done that in the uh, boat, in the boat racing in this game. I mean, sometimes they add small ramps that lead up to more fuel cans or have a nitro boost at the start of them but you know what if they'd added ramps that cross the entire path basically and then you can do barrel rolls or backflips in the boat you know sort of combine splashdown and jet x2o oh. think about that no you know they've got all those simulation games out now you know like uh euro driver simulator farm tractor simulator or not could there's like a what? construction uh simulator or something basically like you know Minecraft? how craft no you know how there are, are flight simulators well they've got simulation games for basically every motor vehicle now really so what if there was a boat simulator you know you just drove the boat i mean i mean like a like a boat like the you know guy in this game is driving i don't actually know if anyone's piloting the boat or not. Whenever I get close enough, I never think to see. So if you could see, but, you know, th you know, if I see. think about it. A boat simulator, you just take it out in a, in a massive like lake. There probably is a boat simulator somewhere. Like, someone's made one, I'm guessing. But I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I'd have to look it up. And then, obviously, you take it to its natural conclusion, you make an extreme sports game out of it. Right. You're driving the boat around a track, you go off a jump, your guy actually jumps up in the boat, but keeps his hands on the steering wheel, and it's like he's doing a Superman. He, well, he kicks his back legs out or something. Or he, like, jumps up to the front of the boat, and, you know, the boat kind of goes vertical under him as he holds onto the top, and I don't know, it's called, like, Leapfrog or everyone, something. Everyone, everyone, ignore that weird glitchy thing that happened at the end of that last challenge. Just ignore it. Please. That was me being cool again. You know, being like, "All oh, good, all oh, good." Um, um, are there any? Are, are there any professional boat drivers that come to mind? Because obviously, we need to to title it like so and so is extreme boat driving. You know? Yeah. Um. When I went to the Amazon, the guy who piloted the boat that we were on, his name was Tito. Tito Ortiz? No, not Tito Ortiz. Just Tito. I hope. By the way, I, I looked that up later. Apparently, Tito Ortiz, um, 
backstory, Tito Ortiz was in Razor Freestyle Scooter for some reason. He was like the one character with a last name, and that's because he was actually an MMA fighter in real life. He retired like 2009, oh. 2010. Okay. But he like appeared in child form or something in the game? Uh, no, nothing on the internet. I mean, the internet says that he was in RFS, but nothing on the internet explains why he was in that. And that's what I want to know. You know, it's like if, if I don't know, uh, LeBron James showed up in uh, Disney Car Racer. Or if, uh, I don't know. I don't keep up with modern wow. sports, okay? Wow, this this place is really... This, this, tra this one is just really fucking you up. Yeah, you can either, like, jump up on the house to grind it, or, like, or lose. you can grind the side of the house and then jump up onto that. And this part looks like it'd be daunting, but just do a double jump and... At max, do a double jump both times and you'll be able to get up to the target. But... That's that's the uh, the nice part where again I'm doing stuff in the level that I didn't think I could do, like I didn't actually really recognize that I could go back there um, while playing the level. But that's that's all the challenges. Yeah, now I'm now I'm really wanting a uh, extreme boat racing game. There's probably boat races out there. I mean there are jet ski racing. There there well, is in, boat racing. I just don't know if there's any boat racing games. Or boat racing professionals. I'm sure there are. Uh, do, you, do you think there's a market for a game like that? I'm a market. But you're, you're a person. You're not a market. I'll buy a hundred copies. Now you're a market, I, I guess. I guess. Make it happen. I'll see you next time in Florida, Florida for the ProWakeboardTour.com. Dot com? Visit that site, oh, I guess. God. I'm going to. For all the latest news on pro wakeboard tours. Yeah. Dot com. <laughs>